Yeah, um, you need to go earlier. So, so, but we but we did bullet point it, and what? So here's what happened: 2016, this crypto exchange called Bitfinex got hacked, and at the time, I think like 120 thousand Bitcoin got stolen. That was like 70 million dollars got stolen, and it was like it was bad. Uh, that was like a big hack. The price of Bitcoin that week dropped by 40 percent. <laughs> so it was like a it caused like this huge, uh, you know, like uh, a, a fear shock in the market. But the thing about Bitcoin is Bitcoin is on a public ledger, right? Like it's a, it's a public blockchain. So everybody could see the coins. So everybody saw, oh, the, the coins are in this wallet. <laughs> and like, and so all the other exchanges were like, look, this is bad for the industry. We will try to prevent, like if, if that wallet tries to cash this out, we won't let them cash out uh, the money. So for many years, that money kind of just sat in those wallets or was moving in like really small small transactions back and forth between a, like a, a web of wallets. Clearly somebody was trying to like launder the money. Essentially they were trying, but, but how, how did he, how did they even get it um, in the first place? So there, I don't know. I don't know what the exploit was that let them hack the accounts and they didn't hack all the accounts on Bitfinex. They actually just hacked like some of the whale accounts. So they were able to take 120,000 Bitcoin from not all the accounts. And the funny thing is Bit Bitfinex didn't have the money to like make those users whole. So what they did was they, they reduced everybody on Bitfinex's balance by 33% or something to like balance it out. Some like horror, like imagine if your bank did that, that would be like insane. I'd be like, Oh, they robbed that guy's vault and you're taking my money away to like even it out for everybody. Like, no, thank you. Um, Oof. so anyways, it was bad. And there's a reason why Bitfinex is not like, you know, the biggest exchange now. Um, so anyways, that the money kind of sat there. Now, fast forward five and a half years go by last week. People start to notice bigger transactions coming from the, uh, the Bitfinex hack wallets. Um, and so they like, there's these alerts on Twitter, like whale alert, whale alerts, like the coins are moving. The coins are moving hundred thousand dollars, a million dollars of the coins are moving 10 million, whatever. And so, um, and so the fed go, or not the fed, sorry, department of justice goes, kicks down a door in New York into this, this, this husband and wife couple's house. And they look like, you know, your complete, like average Joe clean cut. Like you would, this is not like, you know, doesn't look like a grimy criminal, mastermind operation. Uh, and I'll explain a little bit more about that in a second. The funny bit about that. Uh, but basically they seize, uh, like their computers. They, they find, um, a bunch of burner cell phones. They find like a bag of like $50,000 of cash. They find a bunch of like the hardware wallets that had the bitcoins in them. And then they found like folders on their computer that were like fake passport ideas and like, <laughs> like places to go places to run away. Like they found like folders that said that shit on their computers and, um, and they seized three and a half billion dollars worth of Bitcoin because the price of Bitcoin has gone up so much. So that 70 million has become three and a half billion dollars worth. And so these guys were trying to launch, they, wow. they, they don't think these are the hackers, but they were trying to launder that money. They may have been the hackers. I don't know. They, that's not proven. But they were trying to launder the money. And the, the the DOJ had been like, if you've seen that meme of Charlie from It's Always Sunny where they have like the cork board and he's like trying to like find the, find the, the crime or solve the crime. That's what they had been doing because they had, they had this web of all these wallets. And finally, they found that, oh, it's trying to cash out in this wallet owned by this guy, Ilya Dutch Lichtenstein or whatever. But how how did what what type of idiot would use? His well, name eventually in a you need to get the money out. Just and so up? the problem is like. They were trying to get the money out through like but Walmart yeah, but gift cards. They were buying like five hundred dollar Walmart gift cards with Bitcoin. They were doing like PlayStation games. They were like tr they were trying all these small things, but they could never move the bulk of the money. So if you want to move like in mass, you got to do something that had that lets you move size. And usually those could you buy an NFT and then sell uh, it? No, well, you like couldn't eventually do that you need to get the money out of the wallet. That's the problem. So 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 the problem so. In order to do that, there's like an off ramp, right? How do you get it into, you know, U.S. dollars, for example, if that's what you wanted to do? Um, and, you know, he left it there for five and a half years, and they were probably living off it and spending it in some ways. But like, if you wanted to actually like get a lot of it out and get get it uh, and remove the tr paper trail of the blockchain, you need to get it as an off ramp. But to get it as an off ramp, you have like a, um, you know, your idea, like these exchanges, they they require you to upload your license and like they have laws they have to comply with called KYC, know your customer. And so eventually they found that somehow the DOJ, they didn't explain exactly, but they, they identified that the, the money was moving towards a wallet that was owned by a known person. That's how they ended up finding these guys. Now, the funny part is, that's awesome. Right, go ahead. So that, 
Well, so the, I, when I read about this, I was like, wait, that name sounds so familiar. Both their names sound familiar. So the guy, it was, his name is Ilya, I-L-Y-A, I think. It was like a very like weird name. His last name is Lichtenstein. So he spoke at the first HustleCon. I never talked to him, but um, he had a company called MixRank, which was just a normal startup, went through YC, and he spoke at HustleCon. And then his girlfriend or wife, she was a copywriter. And I remember talking a little bit with her because she, her name's yep. Heather Morgan, I think. And she had a, um, a website all about yep. writing sales emails. Totally. Is like that right? Do you remember her? The hack. The day, she had like a red dress. Hack, she had like a LinkedIn yes. post on like five hacks for your, your cover letter for your job interview. Like, you know, like that sort of thing. And so, yeah, she was doing that. She, and so they, and, and the funny thing is like the reason the internet kind of went crazy with it was because here you had two very unlikely characters. So um, we had a bunch of friends text us or text me because I was writing this, this edition of the milk road. And I was like, um, anybody know this guy? And you, you knew him, but some other people knew him. They're like, dude, you would never get vibes of like, this guy might just go launder billions of dollars. It was like smart, like kind of no, quiet, what, like his guy, talk, like engineer type. Uh, he like, he like showed very little emotion. No, I did not think that this guy like, yeah. Had, and, and, no. and then her, she's like this, like super strange Kanye West level weird, uh, you know, like person. She, she basically, she had like an alter ego that was called Razzle Khan and Razzle Khan was her rap name. And then she has like these, super fucking cringy rap songs on YouTube. Like, dude, okay. I have, you know, I have, uh, I, you know, I think it'd be cool to be a rapper, but if I hear myself, there's no way I'm publishing that because it sounds so bad. Russell Kong, the Versace better win. Come real far, but don't know where I'm heading. Motherfucking crocodile of Wall Street. Silver on my fingers and boots on my feet. Always be a good- And so, uh, so- it's horrible. It, it's so bad that the top comment was Paris Hilton. I'm going to prove to everyone that you can have uh, that having money means you can rap good. And then it said, Heather Morgan, <laughs> hold my beer. I didn't even know Paris Hilton has, has like a rap song. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. There's just like, she's like one of the strangest characters. Like I watched, I, I went deep dude for this. I was writing this thing and I was like, Oh, let me get some examples. And then I couldn't look away. Cause like the, the train wreck, dude, it's like weird. there's videos she's of her so wedding uncomfortable. and like, she, she like, forced everybody to like they built like this golden mini Taj Mahal that she sat in and then her bridesmaids lifted it up on her shoulder and brought her in but even the the audience at her wedding is like uncomfortably clapping like offbeat because they're like uh this is this is this normal there's like and there's like clearly only 14 people in the room and then she does a rap performance at the wedding that was like equally cringy and she's just like humping the air oh my it was god super weird. to the guy Iliad Iliad yeah, he goes what, by Dutch I guess so Dude, this freaking guy. Uh, I'm looking at these pictures. That's hilarious. This woman's really hard to look at. She is just cringe city. She, that, that should have been her rap she, name, cringe city. That would have been like, okay, I get it. You're going to be the cringiest. Cool. Um, that's like Henry Cejudo. He the called cringiest himself the, is the, 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 the king of cringe. Uh, yeah, that's what she should the have done. Like, it, it's super strange. But um, but yeah, basically they recovered it. And so now what's going to happen? Anyway, it's just a bunch of interesting little bits to it. So the DOJ is going to give the money back to Bitfinex, it looks like. Bitfinex had, when they, they launched their own token at one point in time called the LEO token, that's like used in their, if you trade in their exchange, it'll give you a discount using the LEO token. So they had to put it a thing when they launched the LEO token, which was like, hey, if we ever recover anything from that hack, um, we'll use 80 up to 80% of it to buy back and burn our LEO token, which will cause like the price, you know, LEO holders to benefit from if we ever recover from this. And so now they're going to get like three and a half billion dollars to buy back. So the price of Leo token like shot up like whatever, 60% in 24 hours because people are like, oh, wow, that's going to be a lot. But they said, we're not going to just cause a bunch of sell pressure in the market. We're going to do a controlled sale over like a multi-year period um, so that it's like scheduled and doesn't like affect the Bitcoin market or whatever. Um, God, this is such a good story. This would make this. Is yeah, be exactly. Such that's a good what everyone movie. was saying is like. Here comes, you know, incoming, incoming Netflix doc. Uh, 